this is uh, Richard back at you. Today we got a little bit diff something different going on. I want to talk a little bit about clutches. A lot of people don't understand clutches and what they look like, uh, the different materials and stuff like that. Now, what we do, we, a lot of our kits, uh, we've looked at them and, and we like to use the clutches that's in the kits. Now some kits, we like to build our own. We'll just buy our gasket set and then Raymond over at Transtar, he knows what clutches that I use because I've been using them so long. But we do pick our clutches to go in separate, uh, special drums. Like you have a, your drum that uh, when you put it in gear at idle, it's not a load drum. You're not at 8,000 RPM or anything like that. You're putting it in gear at idle. So that drum takes a special clutch. Now when you got a, a drum that's going to be coming on at 3,000 RPM, 4,000 RPM, or 8,000 RPM, you definitely got to have a different style clutch in there uh, to take that type of load and abuse. So, but anyway, we've got some uh, clutches laid out here, uh, what they look like. Now, we've got some 350 clutches, some C6 clutches, uh, some 4060E clutches, uh, some Dodge clutches, some uh, Alto clutches, stuff like that. Now, if you get over here and look at our, just start, let's start at our 350 clutch. This clutch right here is just a stock clutch right here. This is your forward. Uh, that moves it forward. This is your third gear clutch that comes on under a high load. This clutch comes on when you just at idle and you put in gear. This is called a low reverse clutch. So basically when you put it in reverse, uh, you, this clutch comes on and your third gear clutch comes on and you back up. Now these clutches here come on under, uh, not under a high load unless you're stuck in the mud and somebody's revving up, banging it in the gear and then they come on in a way that they're not made to come on. So they burn up uh, real easy. Uh, these are not designed to come on under 4,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM, thing like that. Now, you do have a stock clutch in third gear. This clutch can come on, on under a high load, but it's not uh, a type of racing application or hot rod application or something like that that's going to last. Uh, it's just a paper style clutch. There's no uh, material in there to, for really high aggressive to make it grip, anything like that. So. When we build, say we're going to build our 350 back, we're going to use our standard clutch and our forward drum because it's an engagement clutch, it's not at high RPM. And then we're going to come over here and then we're going to grab these clutches here. Now this is uh, your 350, you can put this in your forward and your direct. Uh, it's a little bit expensive to do it that way because you're putting five in your forward and five in your direct. Uh, now this clutch here has the same material on it as the Allison clutch that comes out in the 540s and stuff in your school buses. Now this is the same clutch that we put in our 400 drag race transmissions and our 4L80E drag racing transmissions and our daily drivers. Because on these here, uh, we know they're gonna be under uh, a in a heavy vehicle, under extreme loads and stuff like that. Now since this training is gonna be raced and stuff, uh, at a track possibly, uh, it's going in a 19 uh, Chevy and Cutlass. I'm not sure what type of power or anything like that that we're going to be building this uh, BOP here. Uh, but it's going to be getting the Allison style clutches, but a 350 clutch. Now, if you get over here and look, we do have the 350 second gear clutch. It has the same type of material that our Allison clutch has on it. Or you have your 350 clutch that has your standard paper material. Now, a 350 clutch is so massive in the transmission that it don't take much to make it shift firm and to hold. Uh, so this clutch here, I mean, it really works good just about in any application, racing application or anything like that. Uh, they work really good. This can be overkill at times, uh, unless you're you know, 900 horsepower. And if you're 900 horsepower, then you're not gonna be building a 350. You're gonna be putting a 400 or something like that in there. So, but that's that type of clutch there. Now, if you get over here, uh, to this clutch here, now this is what we call a directional clutch. If you notice, it says top on it. These come out in the 5R55s and stuff like that in your Ford uh, Explorers and stuff like that. So now this clutch here basically would go down in the drum like that. If you put it in like that, it's in backwards. This clutch is designed to spin the oil off of the clutch to keep the clutch dry so it can apply. They're really flooding this drum with a lot of oil, so they want to be able to get that oil off that clutch uh, so it'll grip and not slip. So that is a directional clutch right there. Now a lot of these clutches already have the grooves in them and stuff like that. You can see it here. Those grooves are designed to get the oil off the clutch so the clutch can apply. Uh, this is not a directional clutch. It can go any way you want it. 
Now, but the Fords are directional like that. Now you have an Alto clutch, a 48RE, the overdrive clutch here. Now they do use a totally different type of material. Uh, it's a flat clutch. They use a different steel, everything about it with this clutch pack here. Now we get over to our 4L60Es and 700s and stuff like that. Now we use your standard forward clutch, your standard uh, little uh, engine brake clutch. Uh, you get into the bottom clutch in your low reverse and your 350, you can see here there's a different material again. Now your 350 clutch is a lot thicker than your 4L60E clutch and your 700 clutch. This clutch is a lot thinner, still made out of a different material. Now you get over here and look at the 3-4 clutch pack. This is your standard white clutch here, yellow clutch, whatever you want to call it, paper material. Uh, GM might have used this back in the earlier days, but they pretty much tried to stay with a high energy clutch, which would look like this. This is a six clutch pack kit, three, four clutch. High energy, you can see the metal in the clutch, plate, I mean, material and stuff like that. A lot better clutch. But still, we, if you want to make it better, you can go to the Z pack, which gives you 14 clutches. They're single sided and they, they clamp really good. I mean, this clutch pack kit comes with everything you need to put it in the drum right here. So put you some new load springs in there and you're good to go. So you can kind of get over here and look at what one looks like that's burnt up. If you get over here, grab this. You can see this clutch pack's already starting to burn up. This was in a high horsepower unit, just going in a freshen up job type deal. So you can just see how Everything can be burnt up no matter how you look at it. You can Nowadays you can make so much power that it, it's really hard to get a train to hold up behind anything anymore uh, because of the power that we make. But that's the difference between clutches and stuff like that. Trent, it's Friday, but it's still early. It's only one o'clock. We still got like five hours, four hours to go before we get to go home. Guess we'll make another couple of videos. We'll make a couple more videos. One more thing, guys. Uh, when we take our get our clutches out of our uh, kits, these clutches are, are nasty, nasty. They're not nasty in dirt on them and stuff like that. They got what we call clutch dust, clutch powder. So if you take this tranny or this clutch and put it in your oil that you're gonna soak them in, you're putting it, all that dust in your oil and then you're gonna bring that clutch back out and put it right in your drum freshly soaked. Well, if you come here and watch this, I don't know what I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna blow it over in the air that way. See if we can see it. I just took these out and I'm gonna try to blow these. Did you see that dust? I mean, that's hard to see. I try to blow it towards the door, we don't breathe it in. But we clean, blow all of our clutches off and get that dust on them, or off of them, because every one of them has got it on there. Tip of the day, guys. Now, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned. We have plenty more to come. Y'all have a great day.